I'm very privileged. This will be my third time working on this play. Um, it's my first time directing it. Uh, I had the opportunity to act in a production um, 11 years ago at Utah Shakespeare. Um, I have not told the cast which track I play uh, in the show. Uh, and then about five or six years ago, uh, working as an educator at Illinois State, um, I was able to construct a class that spoke to Illinois Shakespeare's version um, of the play that they were doing at that time. So it's, it's a play that I've had a relationship with, but obviously had never directed. It's not done as often because where we intersect with the play in 2017 is often very different from how uh, 400 years ago, we anticipate audiences intersected with this play. It was registered in 1608, probably written in 1606, 1607. Um, and just our relationship to the content, or our perceived relationship to it, is very, very different. My way into these plays has always been, what's the story? What's the thematic story? And then the aesthetics of that story, they're up for grabs. Um, these plays were done outside, in the middle of the day, with 12 men. Um, they all came in under two hours, which is shocking. Um, that's not how we approach them. And so the whole idea of, you know, well, what are you imposing something on it? Well, we're here in Tennessee. We've imposed, right? Um, my, my feeling is as long as you are telling the thematic core, as long as you are telling the story, and the choices you make tell that story, you've adapted because every work of staged theater is an adaptation, but you have not yet um, imposed. Thinking about what is this play? How do we how do we tell this story on this stage uh, within those parameters? What I love about this play, and sort of the root, the, the, the place where I intersected with it and went, that's what we want to do, is that at the core of this thing is this incredible love story, uh, this story of a war, of uh, two titanic empires, right? Uh, populated by titanic people, and about what happens when the unstoppable force meets the immovable object, right? It explores this binary of a, a world that um, values and sets at its forefront passion, free expression, desire, sensuality, emotion, and a world which in its antithesis sets forward uh, stoicism, duty to state, uh, severity, uh, dispassion, um, uh, temperance and coolness, right? Uh, the Shakespearean scholar uh, John Barton talks about um, passion and coolness being the thing that we're always trying to threaten these plays. And what's beautiful about this play is that that's our binary. It's about passion and coolness. The other thing is this. Uh, I think that we, in America in particular, um, privilege realism because we've all got a television, we've all seen a bunch of movies, and we're all used to realism, realism, realism. And one of the hills that I will like go out and die on is my fervent belief that these plays are not realism. You know, they're, they destroy any sense of the unities, they're speaking in verse, and when they're not in verse, they're in heightened poetic prose. Um, they're, they're not realism. And so every choice we make is meant to be read as a symbol. Every choice we make is meant to be read as uh, semiotically implying something else. Um, history play it ain't. I'm looking at how other people have approached the show. And drawing on the productions I've been a part of. Some productions choose to ignore, just outright ignore, all the sexism and racism and homophobia, uh, gender normative content, and just pretend it's not there. I don't think that works, because we're smart. And like, we hear stuff and go, wait a minute, did they just say what I thought they said? Uh-oh, and the play doesn't work. Some productions have attempted to uh, reclaim, use the show as an act of reclamation. Well, we'll use this as a play to empower the Egyptian people, or to empower the character Cleopatra. I don't think that works for a couple of reasons, and I don't think it would work for me. I don't think that works because, again, that's not the story at the root. And as soon as you try to bend one of these plays to be about something that the thrust of the narrative is not, a chunk of the play will work, and the rest of the play feels like it's about this other. Kevin Rich is the artistic director of Colorado Shakes, who's at Illinois Shakes for a long time, and he says something wonderful. He said, we don't treat these plays like new works, and we should. Uh, they were new works when they were written, and whenever we approach them, we adapt them an inch of their life anyway. They're effectively new works. 
how will our play function, how did our play function? It's a new work.